Coming back from New Zealand, with quite a lot of questions that people were asking in the workshop there. Parents, Suzuki parents, Suzuki students, and mainly Suzuki teachers. I'd like to share an insight into one of the questions. A mother asked me about her daughter who does not want to practice, and she wanted to know if it's worthwhile to continue teaching her or paying for the lessons. It's really difficult to let uh, to give an advice to give advice to parents who struggle with money. But I can only be as honest as I can be from a teacher's point of view. Because I was asked this question from a teacher's point of view. And this is what I said, and she asked me actually to record it and to put it on my YouTube channel so other parents can hear it too. I said Putting aside the money, and if the money is something that you can afford, in essence, I would recommend to do anything and everything to continue the lessons. It's not that this girl, which is a high school girl, is coming home and saying, I don't want to see the teacher anymore. It's not that she's saying, I hate music. It's not even that she's saying, I don't want to go to lessons. She is not, she's only... Not, not taking it seriously in the eyes of the mother. And I'm sure the mother is right. I'm sure the mother knows her child, and she knows that this girl could do much better. Don't we all go through these periods of not doing things the best we can? I'd like to share with you my story, one of them. When I was a teenager, I didn't like practicing to say the least. I just didn't want to practice. And whenever my mom told me, um, asked me if I've, if, I've, if, I've, if I've practiced, I said yes, even if it wasn't true. Why? Because I knew that if, if I'm going to say no, she's actually going to fulfill her threat, which is to sell the piano. In those days, it was not easy to buy a piano. And my parents really went out of the way to get an instrument for me. It was a Bentley, an English piano. Um, I'll never forget it. Because until then, I used to go for three or four months to um, a woman's place and practice at her place. My mother paid her some money and I went and practiced there. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm just remembering. I remember the smell when I went inside the house. I did not like it. I remember the name of the woman and I remember her manners. I remember how she looked. I just did not like going there and practicing there. I felt restricted. I couldn't really express myself. That's what I felt. Maybe I was wrong. So it was she had a, she was a woman with very stern faces. She found a way to make some money and I can understand these were times that was People were really hard with money. <clears throat> Sorry. So she got a few, um, a few, a few dollars, if you want, in uh, Israel money. It was a lira. So she got a few liras, uh, and twice, I think, twice a week, because that's what my parents could afford. I went to practice there, and I did not like it. But it made me uh, realize that actually I really want to do piano because I love the instrument. I was very grateful when my parents um, did, took the big effort to buy me a piano and then I didn't have to go to this woman's place. I was practicing at home. It was a real joy. So this was when I was seven, eight. But then uh, as the year went by and I became a teenager, it became harder to play the piano. Not because I could not do well on piano, but because there were so many things which go in the minds and the heart and the body of adolescents, people, of, the, uh, of, the, of um, children who grow up. It's a very, very challenging time. People say hormones, but it's not just the hormones. It's the whole soul which wants to express itself and you're not a child anymore, but you're not an adult yet. 
and you're still being treated as a child, the world, your family, your society, your culture is looking for you to excel. You live under the expectations of uh, many people, um, from your parents, through your teachers, and so on. So I just couldn't find the solace in me, the place in my heart that will put me in peace with just sitting at, at home and playing the piano. So I used, to, I used to lie, I used to cheat my mother and say, yeah, yeah, I practiced when I did not. She had a few ways of actually finding if I lied or not, and eventually she did find out that I'm lying. And she said, I'm going to sell the piano because it's too difficult for us to have it. I'll sell the piano, I'll have um, the money. Do you know what? I never asked her if she was serious or was, was she using it as a threat. I never actually asked her. I never asked her if it was serious. I would like to know. Anyway, whenever she said, so how about you stop playing? I said, no, 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 I don't want to stop. And this is where the lie started to happen because I, I knew in my heart that even though, even though I don't want to play, I don't want to practice, I don't want to stop music. I still want to do music. So this was the times in high school I hardly practiced. And I'm so grateful that my mother eventually did not sell the piano. And I could go on. Just sometimes thinking of what would have happened if she did sell the piano. And if I had to stop. Where, where was I today? So... Back to this mother, I told her the story. She had tears in her eyes and she said, wow, I was sure that you were very diligent, diligently practicing throughout your life. So this mother was surprised to hear it was far from the truth. And she stopped for a moment. She closed her eyes and she said, so maybe there is still a chance for my daughter. And I said, of course. If she did not ask you to stop lessons, there's something there in the whole set of music and going to lessons and maybe also the communication and the contact with this particular teacher, seeing her once a week and being with her and having another adult in her life. This means a lot to your daughter. Please do not underestimate this. You might not hear many notes played every day. You might not hear the, the most polished piece of performance. But remember, this is just a period in your child's life. Music is a gift for life. And you are giving your child, your children, the gift of music for life. It's like when you buy someone something and you say to them, Do you know what? If you're not using it, I'll just get take it back. It's like you give your friend a present. You give her a, a nice um, um, dish, dinner dish. And you come a few times to, for dinner and you don't see it presented on the table. Because you're, I don't know why, because I don't, maybe because your friend doesn't really like it which is just one option. Maybe just the food she's serving on this particular dinner is not how she wants to serve this meal. And maybe she's keeping it for more important occasions. We don't know. But you're not going to tell her, do you know, I'm noticing that you're actually not using this dish. Can I get it back? No, you won't know it. So let your child enjoy the playing. Let your child enjoy the opportunity or the chance or the gift of learning to play an instrument. Keep the music going. Thank you. <laughs>